I am your host, Doc Rodden, and this is Horror News Radio, the official Gruesome Magazine podcast. Back with me again this week are the scariest, goriest, bloodiest co-host on the net, starting off with the one and only Dave Dreher. How you doing, Dave? Hey! Boy, it's an actual H and R episode. It has been a while. It, it's it, it is. We are back. Uh, we you know the theaters aren't open yet, sir. But uh, you know we're going to try, right? We're going to try to catch up with some of the. We're gonna give it a shot. Uh, the you know the film we're going to talk about tonight, followed, which is the review tonight, is actually in uh, drive-ins. It did quite well, was it? Not the uh, number one movie in the country. Did I not read that somewhere, or am uh, I making that up? You're the news guy. You're the news guy. I'll you with it. All right. Also, I'm pretty on. sure. I'm pretty sure it was the number one movie in the country. I, you know, I'd buy that for a dollar. All right. Also joining us tonight is the award-winning filmmaker Christopher G. Moore. Chris, what's up? How you doing? I'm doing good. I'm glad to see everybody in the flesh here. Um, that sounds dirty. The but... digital flesh. <laughs> the digital flesh. <laughs> <Which seems even laughs> <That's, or> <laughs> Long live the digital flesh. Oh. Um, yeah, it's, it's good to see everybody. And I, I did see, uh, I think a post actually, the people that did follow it actually posted on their Instagram. They are, they, I think they were number one at the box office. I mean, I think they yeah. made like $48,000, but yeah, yeah. It ain't yeah, taking, that, it that's ain't taking much these days, but <laughs> hey, well, that, that, sounds, that, that sounds good. I, I hope they are. All right. Also joining us is rock star, podcasting rock star, even an international cosplay queen, Vanessa Thompson. Vanessa, how you doing? It's been a while. How are you? <laughs> I'm doing great. I'm doing great. After Chris's intro, I feel a little bit like maybe we're stepping into video drome here. So I got to oh, watch don't myself. Start that. Don't start that. No. <laughs> Things Bad might reference. start coming Bad out. Reference. Bad reference. <laughs> it's been a while since we, we've had the, the pleasure to speak with you. Uh, the last time everything was normal, you were in the process of moving. And then, um, well, the whole world turned sideways. Yeah. Uh, and it's been a while. We've had a couple of little weird little episodes, but hopefully... Vanessa, we're all back, and it is so glad, uh, so great to actually see you tonight. Oh, it's great to Yay. be <laughs> All right, uh, and here we are. We're going to make a review. We're going to review a movie. Yeah. It's called Followed. Uh, this is from director Antoine Lee and uh, writer uh, Todd Kick. And I have a card I'm going to show here. Uh, yeah, the cast includes Matthew Solomon, Tim Dreyer, Kelsey Griswold, uh, Sam Valentine, Caitlin Grace, Mark Obi Brown, and John. Savage, that last name you might recognize. Uh, isn't he a, is he Academy Award, Academy Award winner or nominee? I think he's a winner, actually. Um, to gain more subscribers, a controversial social media influencer stays at a cursed hotel only to find terrifying results. This this is crazy. It's, uh, it's not a found footage film. Uh, you know that I like the found footage films. It is actually called Screen Life, uh, and Screen Life is kind of like the Unfriended film. Um, there was, there's been a few of these uh, to various degrees of success. Um, they're interesting, and this one is almost entirely YouTube-ish. And well, actually, it is. All right, they're just going through a bunch of YouTube videos. Uh, they're always enlarged, so it doesn't feel the same. Uh, but it's interesting. We're, we're going to find out what our first impressions of uh, this is while we watch the trailer. Uh, this might be distracting, but <laughs> uh, first is uh, Vanessa Thompson. What is your first impression of Followed? Me? Uh, well, yes. I didn't have high hopes for this at all. I watched the trailer and I was like, oh, great. One of these. Um, and I kind of went into it that way. But for a good while, I really tried hard to hate this movie. And it has a few ah. things that don't, <laughs> it really has a few things that don't make it that hard for you want, for you to want to hate it. But as, as hard as I tried, it just kept getting better and better. It, it really, it shot really well. First of all, you know, I can't stand found footage or anything of the like, really. Ah. I know, but this feels more like a, you know, like a ghost bros, right? It doesn't feel so found footagey, more it has the production value and everything. Um, but I I am really surprised at, at how much I kind of like this and the way that the ending went and the way they tie in that real life story into this fictional story. And I'm very surprised is how I've come out so far. 
Wow, very surprised. Now you know I love found footage. Now, this isn't I mean it is found footage, but it isn't presented in a it, found. It's a it's a combo. It's a yeah. combo. Yeah, yeah I feel really like it's more of a combo. A hybrid. I think, yeah, I think it takes all of the elements of you know everything from paranormal activity to you know unfriended all those things and puts it together and also um, does a good job of sort of like going into that because nowadays you see a lot of these vloggers and stuff that go online and they, and they see all these creepy things and stuff. And so you can sort of see how they tie that into it. So I think the way they do, it's actually a really good, uh, good way of telling the story to where it didn't bother me as much as some of these screen life things where you get kind of bored. Um, it, it, it seemed like a very interesting way to tell the story, but it still had the found footage aspect of it because you had the, you know, them editing together all this footage and stuff, even though he was posting on this YouTube page. Um, but, uh, but, but I mean, uh, for me, I, I really enjoyed um, how it was presented. I mean, I'm one of those, you know, I'm into things like, uh, you know, the, my favorite murder podcast, I'm a murderino. <laughs> um, you know, I, I've, I've watched a lot of these things online. Like there's a, um, there's a girl who did a TikTok video where she was, she bought the house that her grandfather had and they, they found a hole in the wall and they found like a, a Ouija board and these old pictures oh. and they found this basement that was closed off that they've went into. And so, it, and then just recently they had a, uh, someone posted a video of this. Uh, there's this app you, where you, where you go on these random searches for stuff and they found a, a suitcase full of with something wrapped in plastic and supposedly it was chopped up dead bodies. And there's rumor that it could be a, a, uh, so, some serial killer from the dark web who's using these random <laughs> apps to do that, which I guess I should put that in, into a script. Um, but anyway, uh, anyway, I, I'm, I'm a sucker for this kind of things. And I think they did a really good job of like, I, even though sometimes the main guy who's supposed to be this YouTuber gets on my nerves those type of people do that. He, he has that sort of Jake Paul, if you know who Jake Paul is, who, oh, yeah. who recently got in trouble for going to Japan and going to the suicide forest in the same way that he goes to that suicide bridge. So there's a lot of things where they tie stuff from like the, the Hotel Cecil, a lot of things that we know, all these different things, and they melded it together to create this, which I think is a really, I think it's a real well-crafted thing that actually had a f several parts uh that scared the shit out of me. <laughs> so, oh, oh, nice. Nice. Yeah. That, that actually made me very happy. Yeah. As you know, well, we're not going to go there again, but we still have <laughs> Dave Dreher. Dave Dreher, what is your first impression of? Followed. Oh, I was going to say, you, oh my gosh. <laughs> 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 well, you know, I watch, uh, uh, my grandkids are here a lot and they are always watching these YouTube things. Uh, uh, you know, this is definitely a generational thing. I, I don't watch the YouTube things, but I hear them on all the time. And they always got these kind of like douchey hosts, you know, they're, <laughs> you know, they're like, Hey, Hey, Hey. And you're like, you know, and it's, you know, it's like, Oh my God. Um, but it's they, so def <laughs> yeah, they definitely nailed this. I mean, they, they got it down. Uh, you know, so that my first impression was, oh shit, you know, here we go. <laughs> um, but uh, they actually, uh, they actually uh, drug me into this, and uh, I found it to really be a really entertaining watch. And uh, I like how they kind of rolled in, you know, the real life thing of that. Uh, I can't remember her name. I apologize. The girl at the elevator uh, thing. Elisa Lamb. Yeah, Lisa Lamb, and you know, they kind of tied that whole into it, and then how they did it with the whole, um, you know, using the. Uh, what they had, they had a name for it. They're pushing the buttons at a certain time. You went to a certain floor and you had to follow uh, the, the elevator game. Yeah. The <laughs> elevator game, which was great. And I thought it really built huge tension. I mean, as he was, you could see him getting a little more nervous with each step of the game. Uh, and I don't know, it just worked really, really well. So uh, I went into this, not expecting much. And I came out of it really pleased that we took the time to watch it. Okay. I'm incredibly happy. <laughs> this is amazing. So yes, I, I, I enjoyed this quite a bit. I, I was a little worried at first. Uh, there is a particular moment where uh, this particular film won me over. And it's uh, when our, uh, our lead guy, Mike, right, um, uh, gets a phone call from, or not a phone call, but a Skype call from his wife and humanized him. 
at that moment, even though he's a you know a dick, <laughs> right? He, he's your that guy you're describing. Up until then, it, that element humanized him, and it gave him some motivation and weight. And uh, and and from then on, I was in. And uh, but I love the the hotel and the and the, you know the that they built this on where it was, you know, like some floors were uh, what um, low income. Right. Yeah, or like and Section then, Eight housing, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and then the backstory, you know, with they're staying in room fourteen twenty eight, right, and all that. Um, there's some elements that have me baffled, but at the same time, I think that's part of the fun. I, you know, it's uh, it got kind of creepy and scary uh, when the, you know the guys at the end of the hallway and his head bends backwards yeah, and, yeah that was and, good and um you know they they built up the mythology really well and these characters uh felt like friends you know they felt natural so there's a lot of things going <coughs> um there's a twist in this film and that particular twist i i saw coming a mile away and, and i thought they even even though it was really obvious it was coming i don't think they hammered it you know they didn't hammer it home they just kind of let it slide by, which I felt, uh, you know, thought was really strange. Mm -hmm. uh, but overall, my first impression was, was, uh, yeah, like yours. It was better than I was expected, which I was happy, happy to find. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because, uh, yeah, I'm the found footage guy. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, where do we want to go from here? What do we want to talk about? Uh, Vanessa, give us, give us your thoughts about. Uh, you know, you you said you looked up the the backstory with the 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 hotel that's mm -hmm. which is named something different and and the elevator thing. Tell us a little bit about that, mm -hmm. and tell us about how you think. Uh, you know, jump on what Dave was saying and how that how they how they wove that into the story. Um, well, one of my favorites is that the room that they're staying is tied to a serial killer who killed all these people in this room. Well in the hotel Cecil, which is the, what the hotel Lennox, is that what, that's what it was called, right? Lennox. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Lennox based yeah. off is Richard Ramirez. The he night stalker. The, the, night, the night crawler, as they <laughs> call him in the movie. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, wait a minute, that's a different, that's a Jake Gyllenhaal movie. <laughs> and it's also a worm. <laughs> and it's a worm. <laughs> well, so is Richard Ramirez, so it's okay. Um, wow. Yeah. But, <laughs> so <laughs> it's really, they did a really good job kind of matching the things that happened in the hotel, in the hotel Cecil, um, such as the serial killer that they had other strange events going on. Um, lots and lots of murders, then having the same character to represent, uh, Elisa lamb doing the weird thing in the elevator, which brings in the, the, I think they called it the Korean elevator game. Um, and that, that, once you get to, up until that scene, it's really annoying. This guy is so annoying. <laughs> yeah. And like, but he also, he's exactly what Dave is saying. He has that personality that brings people in that people watch these YouTube videos for, but you still hate him at the same time. Up until that moment, when he gets in the elevator, you don't, it's like you said, it humanizes him. And it's such a great, he does such a great job acting that that out himself, you know, put, making the fear out of pushing those buttons and going to the different floors. And I, I was really, really impressed by that. Um, I'm just overall so, so many good things that they did in this movie that I really, really didn't want to like that much. <laughs> I really, really tried because I really didn't like this guy, but as the characters develop, you know, it did lack a little bit on everyone else, right? It, it focuses on our main character and you get a little sloppy on the side characters, but um, I don't know. I think it, I really think that it's, it's hit the nail on the head here as far as this type of film goes in the genre, because we've seen a lot of really bad ones that have attempted to do this. And it kind of reminded me a little bit of um, the movie that we watched live scream, the local one. Oh, yes. Right? It has that kind of feel. Well, that one feels very like a real movie. It has that same kind of found footage feel, that same kind of YouTube live streaming kind of feel, but done in, in a way that you really feel the terror or you feel moments of horror. Um, and I, I don't know. I just, I I was really impressed. Yeah. I Now, some of the side characters had like these 
little stories. And that, that was about the depth they gave them, like uh, Chris and was it Danny? You know, had, Nick. had Chris, uh, Nick, uh, one of them. I, I'm not really sure. The names all kind of went over my head. But uh, his friend had that crush, and he uses the crush to get him to come back. And right. I, so there, there's cute little things there. Um, the I'm not entirely certain I understand what happened to the editor uh, lady that was in the next room. Uh, Chris, do you, did you, is there, are there elements of the story that kind of got lost or did it matter? Did you like, uh, for example, the, her, also the, uh, the symbols on the roof with the, the cow tongue and all the maggots. <laughs> I'm sure you oh, enjoyed that. Chris, right? did you like the cow tongue and the maggots? Yeah. Cause, yeah. cause he's been, he's been <laughs> taking up cooking. So I'm sure. Why, why would I like <laughs> Cow tongue with maggots on it. I, mm. If you know, if you really knew how picky I am around food in general, um, put it in a taco. I was say, eat Taco mm. Bell. So it's not well, <laughs> if it's a Taco Bell five dollar box, I might try. <laughs> um, <laughs> better cook it a little bit more next time. Uh, I, yeah, I, I mean, I, I liked, I liked a lot of the, um, you know, the things that they found. I think my biggest worry that, you know, because there's an element where they, he gives them this medication. I was like, this film better not end with you know, it all being a dream or something, or I'm going to be really pissed. Um, you know, uh, I was really worried it was going that direction. Not that I don't know if that's really spoiler to say that, but just if you're worried about that, no. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I, I mean, I think it's just, I don't think you necessarily have to spell everything. I think the whole point of it is that people go crazy in that hotel. And I think with her having to pour through all that footage and stuff, she's probably seeing all these crazy things and it's just driving her mad. Um, Cause she's having to stare at it. You know, if, if, if for anybody who's ever like I, I do editing. And so you're staring at those images, trying to edit stuff together and, you know, and, and maybe she sees stuff that they don't see or something. So I could sort of see her going crazy. Um, but yeah, I, I loved a lot of it. And I think, you know, I think our big, biggest concern, especially when it gets into the really um, found footage element of it, it, there is a lot of point parts where they're running with the camera, but those scenes are the scariest scenes because you see glimpses of this or glimpses of that. And that's the stuff that scared the shit out of me. It's where it's like, ah, <laughs> uh, because you'd see a glimpse of that or that, and uh, you know, um, and that that's always as someone that, uh, you know, it's almost like when you're a haunted house and you get scared that one time and you keep running and then someone else yes, pops up yes. and you run. And then, cause I had this thing as a kid when I was in a haunted house and I was like, I was at a, it was at a, it was almost like at an elementary school or something. And this, this Dracula was trying to come out of the, the coffin. It scared me. And I started running and then somebody jumped out and scared me. <laughs> and I, I, I probably had to change my shorts after that. Uh, and then I ran out and oh. this guy tripped me and a guy with a chainsaw got in my face. And that's why I don't like chainsaws when I'm in haunted houses. Um, I don't know why I'm going with that story, but <laughs> <laughs> that kind of reminded me of that to where it's like, there was the chainsaw I, guy in there. And I think, I think there was you, one, yes. yeah, yeah, there was a chainsaw dude. Yeah. Yeah. I know, I know. And it's like, oh God, that, I, maybe that's why I brought it back. I'm having, I'm like the, I'm like having post-traumatic, uh, heart, like a, haunted house disorder. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but, uh, but I, I, I like that aspect of it because I think in the most frenetic part of the film, when you can put those kind of scares in there that you have to be really effective at doing that because you have to show it enough so you can get the glimpse of it. And for me, it was like, Oh God, what was that? You know? And I would be the same way, you know, it's like, Oh sh shit. You know, we're, and then at the same time, I'm like, let me just get out of this hotel. <laughs> let yeah. me leave. But well, how to add, to add to that, I have to say, I really like how, because in a lot of movies you watch like this, they go back and watch the footage and you can't see what they saw. I really liked that what they shot remained in all the yeah. footage. Yeah. It didn't go away or make people think that they were crazy or anything. Like you saw the kid's head falling off or you saw, you know, the ghosts that they were capturing. And I thought that was, it, it almost gives it more weight to the movie, right? And it gives it some, like... Because it, it, at any point, you can always write these people off as crazy. You don't need there not to be footage to write them off at cra as crazy, but to have that there kind of solidified that everybody's seeing it together. Yeah. Uh, well, Dave, here it comes. The question we always ask you as the, uh, the you love the gore, you love the special effects. We always look to you, sir. 
Now, this one uses its budget wisely because it's a low budget. Uh, and it has a few elements in here. We talked about, I think, the uh, there's a few gruesome ones like the head coming back, but that's down the that's hallway. A, I was going to say that's, in the, that's in the distance, yeah. Yeah. What is there anything in here that impressed you with what they did or at least for <laughs> – in the environment that they did, I, well, I think what impressed me most is they didn't disappoint me. I mean, uh, you know, they there there is some effects in it, but they're used wisely. Um, I, I don't think there was anything really <coughs> uh, exemplary. I mean, nothing really stands out in my memory as being like a holy shit that was fantastic type of stuff. But it's, I mean, it was very even, like all the way across. You know what I mean? It just uh, it was well constructed. I guess is what I'm trying to say. Yeah, uh, you know, well constructed story, well constructed uh, <laughs> effects, scares. Uh, you know, even though our lead character is an incredible douche at the beginning, at the end, we're actually kind of rooting for him. You know, we're, yeah. we're right there with him. I think so. Uh, you know, so uh, yeah, I, I I think they did a, a stellar job. I don't know how much they had to spend on this, but it's all on the screen. Yeah, and I like that our the the friend who uh, says <laughs> "Sayonara, see you, suckers." Yeah. Um, actually, actually comes back and. Uh, makes a save the day. Yeah. Yeah. Save the day. Yeah. All right. Well, there it is. Let's wrap things up. Let's give our final thoughts, our score one to five, and our favorite scene uh, for followed up first is the one and only Vanessa. Vanessa, let, let us have it. <laughs> <laughs> I I really like this movie a lot. I like I said at the beginning I didn't want to, but it just kept getting better and better and it was shot really well. A lot of times you expect them just to look not that good and it was they took it really seriously and that as someone who watches a lot of movies you can appreciate that. Um I liked all the I thought the actors all did a great job. I really loved the stories that they kind of twisted around from real life and put other things in there and weaved our main character into the story. Um, a little American uh, horror story hotel, right? Mm -hmm. Kind of yeah, feeling. Yeah, yeah kind um, of. It just is pulling from all these really great things and it made it work really well. Uh, I wish I'm kind of with you, Doc. We didn't touch on it too much, but the resolution of our character, I think, fell flat. I would have liked to see something a little bit more bombastic or boisterous or I don't know something uh, with a little bit more punch but you know I can't complain too much because like I said overall it's a really good movie um so I'll go favorite scene favorite scene is definitely that elevator scene ah I know I got to go first so I picked it oh. first uh <laughs> but it's just what it does to the movie how it, how it changes the feeling of everything and the vibe and the way that our lead character is responding to things from then on. Even the theory that he comes up with, with as to how, what caused that elevator apparition to appear and how that goes into the rest of the story and kind of leads you away a bit of a red herring that way. And I just really thought that that worked really well and that that really that that emotion and that horror and that terror that builds up in that moment was really super effective. Um, so I'm going to give this one a three. Oh, no, three and a half. Three and, three and a half. half. Mm -hmm. Three and a half. All right. Well, that sounds great. All right. Uh, <laughs> next is Christopher G. Morris. Sir, what is your final thoughts? Your score, favorite scene. Follow. Uh, yeah. <laughs> like, yes, I'm going to copy her. Um, <laughs> I could be cute too. Um, you are cute. Oh. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I was, you know, as someone that's not a big fan of like the unfriended films. Um, I wasn't sure what to think about this. I mean, I, I saw the trailer and the trailer didn't throw me off that much, but I was kind of worried. But um, I think once you get into it, I think it's a really well craft crafted film that really does a really great job of uh, using the technology to the advantage where it doesn't really take you out of everything. It, it, it definitely does a really good job of like, taking those elements that work so well, you know, in your found footage films or, or your screen live films, um, you know, has elements of, you know, paranormal activity where you're just sitting there watching, you know, these, these uh, cameras recording stuff and things are happening. Nice use of like glitches in certain scenes. And I think because they use so many different forms of technology, it allows you to, to tell the story in the right way where you don't, you're not thrown off by like the amateurs, 
artistic way that some people film stuff. So you have everything from like hat cams to like a drone shot to everything. Um, although I will say you're really not, I'm not sure how much they use the drone in some of those scenes. Cause that would be, it's kind of hard to, to fly the drones in very oh, cramped no. space. That was a gimbal mm. in a lot of the shots. Mm. But, you know, as I, that's me just being a, a, a nerdy filmmaker. It's like, I don't know about that. <laughs> well, you um, have experience with drones, so. Yeah, yeah. yeah I've, I've used drones in two films. Like, mm. I mean, it'd be like <laughs> blowing everything around because it's, uh, it causes so much wind. But anyway, I don't want to pick on anything like that. But I, I think it's I think it does a really great job of sucking you into that. Um you know, and, and if you're used to like vlog personalities, you can sort of see what they're getting out with that. Um, and uh, also just, you know, whoever, you know, the, the omnipresent person that's using the computer and just how it flows to the very end. I think it's I think it really does a really great job of it. And um, I, I mean, the ending's kind of you're kind of unsure about. But I think overall, I think it 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 does what it needs to do. And I think this is probably, in my opinion, one of the better accomplished versions of anything screen life, in my opinion, um, because I think it does a really great job of working in the two different sub genres um, to, to tell a good story. You know, I'd, sometimes the little guy got on my nerves and sometimes it, it, it especially at the very beginning. Um, but, you know, when you watch vlog people, they're, they're like that. They're like the Jake Pauls. We're just always on, you know, always recording everything for no reason. Um, as for um, favorite scene, any scene where they're running down the hall and stuff jumps out. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's not specific enough. With the chainsaw. <laughs> oh God! Ugh. That 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 really got me. I I wanted to run away from my t my computer screen when that was happening because I, I brought back really bad memories. But yeah, that that was like <laughs> oh shit! If somebody's running with a, a it's some kind of saw in the hotel, <laughs> I, I would jump out the window too, probably. <laughs> so, <laughs> but um, but yeah, I think any of that kind because it just the, the the you know the different ghost looks, the different looks. So they had a few people had like weird masks and stuff. Because it's Halloween, um, yeah. I, I, yeah, you almost forget they work that in. That's yeah, right, yeah, and the, and and the the masks and stuff are just so like freaky off that you see it for a glimpse. Like, oh, that if I saw that for, I would I'd be running, you know, <laughs> like I'll get out. I'd have to go buy a whole thing of adult depends so oh, I could no. <laughs> so I could cry myself to sleep. Um. Anyway, that's enough about me. Uh. <laughs> so I I will give it. Uh. You know, I'll give it a four out of five. Wow. I mean, that there are certain elements that <laughs> gives Doc a heart attack. I know, I know, I know. You're sweet. I was funny because I he <laughs> Doc messaged me the other day. I was like, "Did you like it?" I just knew that he was probably <laughs> wondering. He thought I was going to oh. shit on it. It's like, oh, oh. I, was, I was prepared, man. I was prepared. Because yeah, yeah. Because usually I'm not one person who's like. Mm. But this one really this hit all the right nerves and in, and in, in, in good and bad ways. Because I, I, there was some parts I got a little creeped out by, so I I I, I will have to give them a, a a four out of five because I I, re I really enjoy this. This is one of my favorite films I've seen in a while. So yeah, right. well, I'm impressed. All right, well let's find out what Day thought. Day sir, final thoughts, score, favorite scene, running out of time. So make it quick. Make it quick. But <laughs> I'm actually just gonna kind of mirror what uh, what uh, my two colleagues here have said. Uh, I, I think we're all kind of in agreement here. Uh, it's, uh, well crafted, well put together, uh, some good scares. Um, you know, uh, I, I, there's not a whole bunch I didn't like about this. It, uh, it just flows really well. Uh, it's kind of fun to, to watch, a you know, found footage or what do you call it? Screen life or screen screen life. Yeah. Yeah. Screen life film. Uh, I, I think most of us are going to, you know, most people see it are going to relate it more as just a found footage film. Um, but, um, Hey, well, the one thing I forgot to ask, uh, there's a one scene where he's, uh, still uploading and it gets like a phone call. Some, some dude like calls in is, is that, I, I don't, it just kind of threw me off a little bit. I wasn't quite sure what I was seeing there. Do you remember the scene I'm talking about? Yeah. It was just, this guy calls in and says he's worried about the two friends and it just kind of sets us up for some, you know, Oh crap. Something's going to happen to him. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. It's just it's right. doom, doom so it's like a random call. It's just like all yeah, of a sudden mm -hmm. guys logged into his account and someone's taken notice and is just trying to like Facebook, 
call him in. Yeah. Basically. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. It just got, it was just kind of startled me. I'm like, what the hell is that? What, what, what? okay, what's <laughs> going on? Um, so, uh, but yeah, uh, Vanessa stole my favorite scene by uh -huh. without a doubt. That's the best, <laughs> the best scene in the movie, as far as I'm concerned. So now my backup one would have to be, and we've already talked about it is, uh, it's actually just a shot. I'm not even think it's a scene, but it's when the guy's out in the hallway and we see the, the, you know, further down the hall, the, the guy kind of walks across and his head breaks yeah. off backwards and it was really good kind of kind of a creep, <laughs> it kind of the way it was lit and everything had like a real creep show vibe to it yes yeah. like a comic yeah. book vibe and, and uh, again, that sound like yeah, that, <laughs> yeah and so that was good it was a really great shot so i'll go with that one but uh there's a lot of other good scenes like christopher said the same thing with the you know when they're running down the halls and when he's in there with all those mannequins when he goes oh, down man. in the basement the you know yeah i mean that's all good so and I'm going to I'm going to split the difference here. I'm going to go three point seven five. Oh, nice! Yeah. yeah. So. Wow! Wow! <laughs> <laughs> hard, hard. All right. So yeah, the, the found footage film. It's uh, screen life, whatever. I liked it. Um, ironically, I, I think you guys liked it more than I did. Holy cow! <laughs> I uh, I thought it was really well done. I I think it lost a little steam and maybe the final act. Uh, you know, we touched on that with the uh, the twist and mm -hmm. the resolution. Uh, but getting there, the journey was a lot of fun. Uh, they get, you know, once they get into the hotel and they, and he goes from skeptic to starting to believe, right? So once he starts to believe, uh, then it gets really crazy because, you know, <laughs> yeah. I, although I did like it when uh, Fred the head just falls off the shelf. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> like a, a little, you know, uh, red herring. I um, what am I going to give this? Uh, I I was originally going to give it a three and a half, and I feel bad. <laughs> I feel like I no, I should give it a three point seven five or a four. But yeah, I worked down three and a half. Oh my, it's solid. Uh, I just it is. So it is. It's reputable. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I really did enjoy it. I I watch it again. Mm -hmm. Would you want to go see it at the drive-in, Doc? Would you want to? Would you go see it at the drive-in? You know, I, I'm I'm curious if this kind of film would work in a drive-in. It's such it's such a departure from the way it's intended, right? Um, or what, what it's trying to represent, rather. I don't know what it's, you know. I watched it on my TV. I streamed it, you know, to TV. TV, And I would imagine, Chris, it's a little scarier when you watch it on your... On your I was watching TV. it on my computer. I didn't I didn't realize how screen life it was going to be, or yeah. I guess we should call it scream life. Oh, um, oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, it, it, it made it more... Yeah, the, the realism of it of watching it on like a, a computer screen definitely sells it a whole lot more. It it might be kind of weird, I guess, watching it on a, a drive-in, but I, I think some of those scenes with the the camera work, I think, would still be effective. It'd just be bigger. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you hear me screaming in my car. <laughs> <laughs> oh, It'll be your new te your text tone for whenever mm. somebody texts. Yeah, maybe I should go <laughs> vlog myself screaming in my car. Oh no! Well, I'm watching it. Oh wow! Well, from my favorite scene, since you guys took every single one of mine. Um, <laughs> I'm, okay, at one point there's a kid, and he chases a kid around the the hotel, and he chases him down to the fourth floor, while mm -hmm. our other two are back on the 14th floor, and something weirds happened, and they're they're freaking out, and I think the chainsaw guys after him, right? And that's yeah. when they're they're actually yeah. in the room, yep. and the chainsaw guys outside, and then they hear a knock on the door, and it's starting to rattle. And the guy's downstairs on the fourth floor trying to get into the room where the kid went in and the door opens and the guy on the fourth floor is now on the 14th floor. And I thought that was awesome. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, it's a very simple, I mean, it's, it takes and just his reaction to it too. His yeah. like, wait a minute, what the hell? And, and they, you know, of course their reaction too, cause you know, he's a prankster. So they thought that they were pulling his leg, but you know, yeah. we watched it. And of course they would have too, they would have watched what we saw. So, um, or we saw what they would eventually have watched. How's that work? I, anyway, <laughs> so uh, yeah, I just thought that was really clever. And, uh, and and the film has that throughout it. Uh, the basement scenes, we didn't really talk about the basement scenes when it goes, because one of the things is that the, the drone that you're talking about goes into the basement and then something happens to it and it's expensive and it's behind like this chain. It's rented. Floor. It's rented. I think. Yeah. So uh, they have to go get it. And he, he eventually does. And uh, that, that's pretty creepy part of the film. You know, yeah. It's handled really well. And there's like things coming at him and he's, you know, noises and 
even mannequin parts. (laughs) (laughs) Although, (laughs) although if I have a metal pipe, I'm not going to throw it down. (laughs) No, no. it's true. (laughs) What does he think is going to happen? I don't know. It was kind of creepy when he went to reach for it. I I knew that. (laughs) I know. I yelled at the screen. He's like, no, don't don't throw your only weapon. All right, so that's our review for Followed, uh, the number one film in the box office this weekend. <laughs> Drive ins near you. Wow. VOD. Yeah, wow. Uh, yeah, took it from The Wretched and uh, some of the other yep. not recently. Yeah. Uh, so if you like what's happening here uh, with this, is our, you know, we returned and we're on video. It's also going to be streaming on our. At, on our podcast uh, RSS feed, so those who would like to listen, don't worry, you're still going to catch us there. Uh, and if you're on uh, Patreon, we're eventually going to be putting this one up on uh, the live stream there, and you'll watch us record live. Oh my! Yeah. Uh, speaking of that, if you'd like to support, you can go to horrornewsradio.com/patreon and, and find out why. But really, the easiest way to help us out is to spread the word, uh, share the podcast, tell your friends, review on iTunes. Uh, you can also what would really, really help us is come to YouTube and uh, subscribe there and like and uh, do the little bell ding thing and set it up so you can alert. <laughs> the the bell ding bell thing. Thing. There's a bell. There's a bell down here somewhere. There's no bell by me, Doc. There's no there's bell there. You're pointing to me. I, I do not have a bell. It's over by Vanessa down below her. <laughs> and uh, you can set it up and get alerts. You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody wake me up. I'm flabber, an idiot. Uh, but, uh, yeah, they'll so, find it. Yeah, Doc's but, been drinking again. Uh, don't. Sh- <laughs> uh, but let us know what you think. Uh, you can comment down below. We'd love to hear from you. Uh, if you saw the movie, let us know what you thought of that. If you saw a different movie or anything, or you know the format, uh, recommend movies. We want to hear from you. We, we really uh, enjoy our fans, and uh, so please let us know. You can also email us feedback at gruesomemagazine.com or find our Facebook group or go to gruesomemagazine.com and leave comments there too. We want to hear from you. Uh, we want to thank Rocky Gray for our killer HNR theme song. Uh, how long? You know, we've been at this, Dave, for seven plus years. And right. we, had, we had a theme song at first. And, yeah. and then we got this from Rocky Gray. And, and you know, I've lost track. Has it been three? Four? I think three years. I think it's been three years. Yeah, yeah. I think. Man, it's so awesome still. I yeah, like I hadn't it. heard it in a while, actually. So when you had it at the intro, I was like, oh, hey, there's our yeah. still there. That's right, because we I edited it in later. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, next week, uh, come back, and we're finally going to do Scoob. <laughs> oh, we're going with the Scooby-Doo. Ruh-roh. Uh, I love Scooby-Doo. Um, this will be f- interesting, fun, outside of the box, but I'm looking forward to it. Uh, and then uh, hopefully, come July, theaters will open back up, and we will uh, be reviewing things on a regular basis. Will Unhinged actually make it into the theaters? Will it? I don't know. They they said St. Maud's going to do it too. Uh-huh. Yeah, well, they're getting ready to open them here in Ohio. They're they're okay. saying it's going to happen. So let us know. Are you going to go to the theaters? Comment below. All right, guys. Uh, with that, uh, Christopher, Vanessa, Dave, my brother Dave. I want to thank you for joining me. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> here's the story. I know. <laughs> All right, uh, you crazy, crazy boogers. All right, with that, let's, uh, let's say good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.